Hello from a snowy cold day here in the Boston area. It's about 10 degrees right now. The RV is covered for the winter, but I am making some improvements to hopefully make our camping a little nicer next spring. I'm gonna be upgrading my lead acid batteries to lithium ion and also changing out the charger and converter here in my 2006 Winnebago Outlook. So when I started researching this project, I didn't even know what the charger was or whether or not I would need to change it, but I learned, figured it out, so this is right under my refrigerator in the galley section of my RV. It's where my 120 circuit panel is. These are the circuits for all the household outlets, the refrigerator when it's on uh, uh, shore power, the microwave, the air conditioner, those are all controlled there. And then behind it, I don't know if you can see these, that's the 12 volt uh, fuse panel as well. So below that is actually where the converter charger is. And I found this sticker here that gives me the exact make and model. Mine is made by Parallax. It is a 7345. I checked and that is not compatible with my new lithium ion batteries. This only works for lead acid style batteries. So today I am going to be changing out this converter and wiring everything for uh, lithium ion, putting new batteries in. So it's probably obvious, but you want to disconnect the battery and make sure you're not hooked up to shore power before you do any work. All right, so the power's disconnected. Uh, I have the replacement charger here. Uh, I ordered it from Battleborn Batteries. They're also the ones who supplied me with the lithium ion battery. And they also include instructions that are super helpful. In this case, this is for my Parallax 7345. So I am just going to go through and follow the instructions step by step. One thing to note is that the screws on the front of this cover are actually a star bit, uh, in this case a T15, just to make it tamper resistant. So you're gonna need a special screwdriver. All right. So just like when you work on anything old, a 15 year old RV has its challenges. In our case, the uh, fourth screw for the cover was completely stripped. So I wasn't able to back it off. I tried a bunch of different things. I ended up just having to cut it with a, uh, a Dremel multi-tool. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I have to remove the AC panel and then disconnect a couple of the wires. Now I want to pull the uh, DC circuit board so I can disconnect some wires in there. All right, and now my circuit board is loose. I'm going to remove this converter positive wire from the front side. There's a converter negative wire in the back of this panel here. It's a little hard to see. Now I get both DC wires disconnected from the circuit board. I'm going to pull them, try to get them loose from behind here. Everything's a little tight in here. Of course, this being a 10 or so degree day, it doesn't help. The wires are not flexible at all. If it were a little warmer, this would be easier, I think. So the new controller also shipped with a new 12 volt fuse panel. I don't have to put this in, at least that's what Battleborn told me. Uh, I can keep the existing fuse panel if I want, but I think I am just going to swap it. These connections were soldered in the circuit board, so they take a little work to remove. I could just cut them off and strip them, but these wires are a little short, so I'm gonna try to just kind of force them out here. At this point, I should be able to just back off the four screws holding the converter in place and then pull it out. All right, so it took a little work, but I got the old converter out. I have not yet put in the new DC panel. I'm waiting to get all these things in place, but I wanted to just show you the new converter setup here. So this is it. There's two fans on it, one on the side heat sink back here and another one here and then there's these sets of wires so this here with the white green and black they're bundled together with a wire tie 
and those are my 120 volt. Those are going to go to that side of the panel. And over here are my DC side. Of course, they're <laughs> opposite of where I need them, but uh, so be it. Run them across. And then this is also the case that comes with the new uh, unit. And you can see there's four holes on the bottom here. They align with, it looks like, four holes on the bottom of this charger. This will slip in like that so that one of the fans will be facing outward towards the vent and the other fan lines up to that side there. So I'm going to get this uh, installed and then move it into place. Now I can connect the 120 volt feed from the converter into the breaker panel. The white wire is the neutral. Green is ground. And then black is hot and it attaches to the circuit breaker. Now I've got to get the 12 volt lines up. All right, then I can connect the wires from the charger and the battery to the lugs on the DC panel. Those just use an Allen screw. So now I need to take all these branch circuits from my 12 volt side and set them into these lugs. My old DC fuse panel had nine circuits. This new one has 12. So I'm actually gonna start from the right and work my way left, just because these ones on the left are a little hard to get to. There's a wire here that connects the DC circuit board to the charger circuit board. The instructions say I technically don't need to use it, but I figure since it's supplied, why not just put it in? Then I at least know where it is, even if it's not doing anything, right? Now I can move the fuses from the old panel to the new one. And reinstall the AC side cover. This comes with a sticker to label all your new circuits. So I'm just going to transfer what was on the old panel over to the new one. What I want to try to do is just cover the old circuit schematic here. And they also give me a label that says that this converter has been upgraded. So I'm just going to cover that here so that people know it's a retrofit. And it also has my serial number, which I can put right there as well. All right, now the cover. Since the old screws were stripped, I'm just going to replace with new ones. All right, so this is the new battery. It's a 100 amp hour Battleborn lithium ion. I have room in here for two. I'll probably end up adding a second one at some point. But for now, get this in place, and make up the connections. Here's the sequence for the uh, hardware to connect the battery to the wiring. And you can see I've cleaned up that with some uh, emery cloth just to make it nice and clean. They give you a bolt and a washer. Those go on first, then through the lug on the battery, and then another washer like this, and finally a lock nut. 
and that has to be tightened with a torque wrench. That cannot just be hand tight. Have to make sure that it is very, very, very tight. That is pretty secure. And then it's the same sequence on the negative terminal. All right, the new batteries are in. Uh, I've turned everything back on. You can see my uh, lights work there. And it's really nice just being able to have everything on, knowing it's gonna last for a long time. There's some other 12 volt LEDs that I have. And I guess I went from dead lead acids, so I needed to replace them anyways. I went with lithium ion. So far, I'm happy. The install took a little bit of work, but uh, you know, I'll keep you updated. I'll do another video maybe a couple months in, or certainly once it gets a little warmer and is camping season. Obviously, you've just seen all the steps, but the one thing I want to reiterate is if you're not comfortable doing electrical work, this might not be the project for you changing out the converter and rewiring. That took a lot of work on my part, and uh, I have a lot of electrical tools. I've done a lot of electrical work over the years on my own house and here in the RV. If you have not done a lot of electrical work, don't have those tools, aren't as familiar, it might be a little uh, easy to get lost, especially kind of going through the instructions. They are, they make sense if you've done projects like this and you're going to run into things that aren't on the instruction sheet. But you know, that's the step-by-step. -step. If you have a newer coach that has a lithium ion charger, you don't need to do any of this work. Just swap out the batteries and you saw how easy that was. So thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. This is my first one in this series, but I've got this RV now and uh, can't wait to show you more.